In a previous episode, I touched on the best setting for the Souls Arc with the Subgen 3. Now that took a long time to do, but it was actually easier than the Sonos Beam Gen 2. And why? Because the usual pairing with a Sonos Arc is a Subgen 3, and I only had to take care of that combination to satisfy the majority of you guys out there. But for the Sonos Beam Gen 2, the same could have been true before last month, but then Sonos launched the Sub Mini, which was a perfect fit for the Beam Gen 2. Now, there are already a lot of users of the Sonos Beam Gen 2 pairing it with the Sub Gen 3 or the older Sub Gen 1 and 2, because that was the only sub available from Sonos for many years. But now, because of the Sub Mini, I have to do another combination. Now in today's video, I decided to get the video for the best setting for the Solos Beam when paired with the regular size Sub Gen 3 first. Now I believe there are many more viewers out there with this combination than the Beam with the Sub Mini combination because that is still pretty new. Now if you are owner of the Sub Mini, you might want to try out this set of settings first. You'll find an improvement regardless, but it will not be specifically optimized for the Beam with the Sub Mini. Now I promise to come up with this set of recommended settings for the Beam with the Sub Mini very, very soon. Like in all my videos, I like to give you an upfront summary of the video first. So if you don't have time to stick around for the whole video, you can take this and go. The settings are all summarized in the chart right here. Now, all you have to do is to go to your Sonos S2 app to make the changes and you're done. So to walk you through quickly, uh, from whatever volume you are listening to, increase the volume by about 10%. So for example, if you are at volume 50 now, add 10% to that number and you set the volume at 55. Now go to EQ setting, set the base to minus three. Leave the treble at neutral, which is zero. I leave the loudness switch on always. Now go to True Play, perform True Play if you can, and then you turn it on. For surrounds, it won't impact the sound signature much. I leave it to zero, but you can set it to your liking if you like to have more ambient sound. The sub audio needs to be turned down quite a bit to minus four. The sub gentry is that powerful after the 14.18 update. So for highs, leave it at zero, but like the surround, it doesn't impact the sound signature very much, so you can set this to your preference. The next setting is actually on your now playing screen, so ensure that the night mode is turned off and enable speech enhancement, which makes a big difference for the Sonos lineup after the recent update. So that's my upfront summary, go ahead and you can try it out, but if you can, please spare another couple of minutes for me to go through this with you, so that you get a better understanding of why why I do these settings and how to arrive at the preferred settings. Now, I know some of the settings might actually be counterintuitive to you, so that's why you will need an explanation. Now, after I explain the settings with the frequency response charts, which I will do, I will be letting you hear the difference of the um, speakers of the setup in binaural recording of the Beam Gen 2 in stock settings as well as the Beam Gen 2 in recommended settings, both when paired with the Sub Gen 3. Now, if you have found the recommended settings useful, I would really appreciate it if you could show your appreciation by contributing to my coffee fund. Now, I have a Patreon account which can be accessed by scanning the QR code right here or I will place the link in the video description down below. Now, the simplest way if you don't have access to Patreon is to actually click the Super Thanks video button right below this video for a one-time contribution to thank me for my work. Now, all these settings, they look really simple but to be rigorous about it, it takes a long time. Now, I don't put up a paywall so that uh, it can be accessible to everyone and anyone. Content creation on YouTube is a bit like street basking, you know. You play the music on the street, some people walk past and won't care more about the music. Some enjoy it and take it in like the air, which is already there and it's for free, right? So basking survives on the grace of those who actually tip the jar, tip the hat. And so do I survive on that. So thank you very much to all. Okay, so I want to quickly dive into the frequency response charts. So for those of you who are not familiar with what a frequency response chart is, basically it is to show how much sound 
the beam Gen 2 with the Sonos Sub Gen 3 outputs at different frequencies all the way from the base region starting from 20 Hz up to the extreme frequency response of treble at 20 kHz. Now the input signal is actually flat and has the same volume throughout the whole range. So an ideal speaker will replicate that and show up as a perfectly flat line. But in reality, that will not be the case because of speaker design capabilities as well as your room interaction. So for the Beam Gen 2 with the Sub Gen 3 combination, this blue curve here will show you what it sounds like when playing in stock settings. Now you can see that the blue curve is still relatively flat by most standards. There is a slight bump at the lower frequencies from 200Hz downwards. The Sub Gen 3 lends some bass to the beam and it is evident from that bump. And it's still very audible down to the subwoofer frequencies actually. So in the stock form, you won't find bass missing and judging from this curve, it actually does seem to be a very competent setup already. Now the next curve I'm going to be pulling up is in yellow. Now, and this is after I've made true play enhancements, right? So you perform true play and you apply it. You'll notice that there's actually a huge difference. Now, it bumped up the bass tremendously as that's probably what Sonos thinks it should do to balance the sound and to make the speakers sound good. Now, if true play is doing so much for this room, which is my bedroom, that would mean that my room is deemed to be sucking some bass out of the system, right? But that is not true. That's not the case. I know for a fact, listening to the beam quite a lot in this room at night, that the bass was never ever lacking in that particular environment, in that particular situation and setup. So in this case, the subgentry seems to want to perform at a much higher output levels determined by Sonos. Now, while you should definitely do true play to tune the system to the room, I do not agree with this amount of bump that the Subgen 3 is putting out after true play. Technically, after true play, Sonos would have normalized the sound to make it look something like the, this curve that I have here, right? But we all have different rooms, but that's what true play is supposed to do, to normalize it so how it sounds in my room and your room are going to sound similar. So this is where I started to tweak a couple of other things. Now, here's the chart for your reference once again. Now, I will talk you through why I made some of these changes. And here's the chart in orange after I made and applied the recommended settings here. Now, basically, I had to pull the bass down a tad to control that bump that Trueplay put into my system. Next, I had to reduce the sub-audio dramatically by minus 4. Now, at this point, I have to say that the sub-gen 3 could be a tad too powerful for most bedrooms. And Sonos definitely made the right move coming up with the Sonos Sub Mini for smaller spaces like your bedroom. So, with these changes, it will control the bass response a little bit more, which you can see by the slightly lowered output in the bass frequencies below 100 hertz. Now, the next most important change will be the speech enhancement. Now, this will truly enhance the sound of your system and the difference is actually quite remarkable. Now, this will cause the mid-range and the treble to increase quite significantly and you will see that the curve for the frequencies beyond 200 hertz to be pulled up quite a bit. Now, for all the other settings that I have not mentioned, leave them as it is in stock settings. Now, the last thing is actually volume setting. I know I caused a bit of confusion the last time, but when I say increase volume by 10%, I don't mean increase volume by 10 points or set the volume at 10. For example, if you are currently at volume 50 for stock settings, after applying the recommended settings, you should increase the volume output by 10% of 50, which is 5 points, and that will result in a volume of 55. So at this point, you might be asking, why increase the volume? It doesn't change the uh, sound profile, right? Yes, but it will compensate for the reduction in bass which we tried to pull down earlier. And in relative terms, the mid-range and treble would have been enhanced. The resulting curve is actually more balanced than the true play curve. And you will notice that the mid-range and the treble is greatly enhanced. The bass is controlled but still exciting with a lot of presence in the 40 to 60 hertz range. Now, if 
all this is a little bit too hard for you to understand. You might want to just try it out for yourself. I have recorded two binaural recordings. It's a 3D audio recording of the Beam Gen 2 with the Sub Gen 3 before and after applying the recommended settings. Now, put on a good pair of headphones and hear the difference for yourself. I have also used a real-time spectrum analyzer for each of these recordings. So at any point in time, when the video is playing, you can pause it and you can inspect the spectrum analyzer to see and to visualize the difference that my recommended settings have made to the system. So without further ado, let's hear it for yourself. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio with powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Whether the soundscape sits the mood of the scene captures the full extent Do you want to know my secret? of nature's fury. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Soundscape sits the mood of the scene. Put your vehicle to the side of the road. Whoa! What is this place? Whoa! Come on, you guys, let's go! Or captures the full extent. Do you want to know my secret? Of nature's fury. So I hope that has been helpful and if you're still on this video at this point in time, I'm assuming that you found some value in this video. You can help me with a small action by subscribing to this channel for more such videos. You could also drop a comment down below if you don't know what to say, maybe try Kamsia. Kamsia is a dialect spoken in Singapore and it simply means thank you. 
right? So if you can't get enough of my videos or you find that you need the recommended settings for another Sonos system, maybe try out this video right here for the Sonos Arc recommended settings. Now, if I have the Sonos Beam with the Sub Mini recommended settings out already at the point of time you are viewing this video, you can also check out that video. And I will see you over in either of those videos.